Good evening, George Nachik here. About a year ago, I made a video detailing the lies and fraud of a one Mr. Robert Nodal, or known as Bob Nodal. Since that time, the video had over 5,300 views and was up a year. And quite recently, over the last few weeks, that video was targeted by Mr. Nodal and a group he belongs to called FE Core. And they made a privacy complaint against my video. There is no such thing as a privacy complaint regarding my video, but it's not only my video that was targeted. There, uh, Sly, Sparkane, and others were also targeted for using that very same page. This was a page taken out of a public disclosure by F.E. Core um, that uh, disclosed the board members of the organization with their pictures and names, and I used that, and so did others. Now, I have taken that original video, modified it to remove those sections that uh, apparently were objected to by Mr. Nodal, and I'm also adding new material uh, along with the um, original material to further detail the lies and fraud of Mr. Nodal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with detailing uh, the inept and <laughs> the the ineptness, the incompetence of this man that calls himself an engineer, Mr. Noel. And it is just absolutely incredible on what he did in last week's Goldbuster show. This is the se September 15th show called <clears throat> Uh, street active uh, street activists and commonly asked questions I will give you a link in the video here and you can uh, start viewing the section that I'm referring to uh, begins around uh, 47 minutes into the video and it, it's absolutely unbelievable what mr. Nodal did I mean the the man is incredibly stupid. He has to be in order to say something like this. It's absolutely appalling and I will go through the analysis. I will play his words and as his words are spoken I will do the analysis. I'll give you a diagram on the board that he doesn't in uh, the Globusters so that you can see what's going on and I will also give you a real demonstration as to uh, how light behaves and that will counter totally what Mr. Nodal was claiming. It, again, it's just absolutely appalling that this man would state such things. And this goes along with his analysis in the past regarding moon bounce and getting signals back from the moon and from Mars and the Mars rover. Now, the man does not understand radio wave propagation or electromagnetic wave propagation of which light is a member of. The, he claims to be an RF engineer and that's just absolutely BS. He couldn't possibly be an RF engineer and make these sorts of uh, errors. All he's doing is conning you people. For those of you that don't have enough understanding of the mathematics of the inverse square law are easily fooled by these clowns uh, Globusters. And I will show you uh, in an example here uh, exactly what they're doing and how they're fooling you. And this is just one of many examples that they have done over the years to pull the wool over your eyes and fool you. So, we'll get started here. I'll, I'll play uh, the audio from the Globuster section from last Sunday, and I, along with the audio, I'll go ahead and uh, do a diagram on the board, and then after Bob Noto has finished with his explanation, I will go ahead and show you uh, 
why that is totally wrong and and in an inept uh, analysis. The man is incompetent. What I have diagrammed here is what Bob Noble is going to tell you in his analysis uh, last week on Globusters. I haven't put all the numbers in because they'll make it too busy, but I'm just going to go over this right now and then we'll listen to Bob Noble's explanation. First off, we start with what's called the perspective equation. That is, if we have some object here that the diameter across it or its size is d, and we're back here as an observer, then the angle, the angular measurement that we see on this object at a, di uh, a distance r away, is given by this. This is the angular measure and it comes out in radians. That is, you take the object size, you divide by the distance to the object, and that gives you its angular measure in radians. Now if you want it in degrees, you take the angular measure in radians, divide by pi, which is 3.1416, and multiply by 180. 180 divided by pi comes out to 57.3. So, there are 57.3 degrees in one radian. If theta is one radian, then it is 57.3 degrees. So that's what that means. Now, the eye's resolution is 0 0.02 degrees, 1 50th of a degree. And that works out by putting in here, if you put in 0 0.02 for this, and then solve for radians, 0.02 divided by 57.3 comes out to 349 microradians or 0.000349 radians. And this is 72 arc seconds, exactly. 0 0.02 degrees is 72 arc seconds. That is, um, what you do is you multiply by uh, 3,600 by 0 0.02 to get arc seconds. Now, in astronomical um, endeavors in astronomy, since the distances are so large, we normally don't like working with miles or kilometers because the numbers are so large. And we rate or we talk about distances in terms of astronomical units. An astronomical unit is if we have the sun and we go from the center of the sun to the center of the earth, this distance is one AU, or astronomical unit, and that's 93 million miles, or 150 million kilometers. Okay, that's one astronomical unit. The center of the sun to the center of the Earth is called one astronomical unit. Okay, so an astronomical unit is 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. Now, the sun's diameter is 865,000 miles across. So that would be the sun's diameter here. Now, if we were to put in the numbers, we would find that the angular resolution that we see the sun's disk is if we take 865 million, oh, or 865,000, which is 0.865 million, divided by 93 million. This gives us um, a, a measure in radians, and then by taking radians and multiplying by 57.3, this comes out to, so if I take 0.865 divide by 93 these these are in millions and multiply by 57.3 I get 0 0.53 degrees okay so that's basically what we have for an angular measure in looking at the Sun it's about a half a degree now, the distance from the sun to the earth, 
the time that it tra takes light to travel, if we have the sun radiating light, and we have the earth over here and the sun, it takes real close 500 seconds. That is, light travels at about 300 uh, million kilometers a second, and if the distance is 150 million kilometers, um, or I mean, uh, the velocity of light is 300 or 300 million meters per second, or 300,000 kilometers a second. We divide into 150 million kilometers, we get 500 seconds, and that's well within a tenth of a percent. So. The sun distance is 500 light seconds. That's another way we can measure distances. One astronomical unit is 500 light seconds, which is 8.33 light minutes. So we have many different ways to express distances in uh, the vastness of shape, shape uh, space. We use light years, we use astronomical units, um, and just miles and kilometers. Um, you've heard of a light year, well that's the distance light takes to travel a year, but in distances that are less than a, um, uh, uh, that of a light year, we talk about light seconds or light minutes. So light takes um, about 8.3 light minutes to travel from the sun to the earth. That is, if the sun were to all of a sudden go dark, we wouldn't know it for another 8.3 minutes <clears throat> uh, that the sun all of a sudden disappeared and went dark on us. Okay, so I'm going to use a scale that one astronomical unit is a half inch. So if I take my tape ruler, I go from the sun out here, I've got 500 inches, or this represents 100 astronomical units. So the numbers on top are astronomical units. These are to be out here, we're at 16 astronomical units or 16 sun-earth distances. So if you want to get miles, you just take the astronomical units and multiply by 93 million. For example, 32 astronomical units. We can rate that since one astronomical unit is about 8 light minutes. 32 times 8 is a little over uh, 240, and that's about 4 light hours. And the uh, distance is 93 times 2, 32, or 2.976 billion miles. Out here at 64 astronomical units, we have 4, 5.952 billion miles. At 80 astronomical units, 7.44 billion. Well, the edge of our solar system out at Neptune, Pluto, is 40 astronomical units, or at 3.72 billion miles, uh, is to the edge of our solar system. Now, the resolution of the eye is 0.02 degrees. So in terms of astronomical units, that is the sun's disk at 865,000 miles across, it falls below the resolution of our eye once we get out to 26.6 astronomical units. So about three quarters of a little over a, a half of the distance to the edge of the solar system. This is the resolution of our eye. Uh, this is the distance that if we were to travel out in space away from the sun and we had a filter and we were looking at the sun's disk, the sun's disk is going to get shrink, get smaller and smaller and smaller until we can no longer resolve the disk of the sun at this point. And that's at 0.02 degrees or at 26.6 astronomical units. Now, you will hear Mr. Noel claims that once you get out to the resolution of the human eye, the sun becomes invisible at that point, which is a pile of crap. The sun's disk you will not be able to resolve beyond this distance, but you're certainly going to see the sunlight, the photons being emitted out from the sun. In fact, you will be able to go out uh, several light years and still see 
light coming from the sun. You'll never be able to resolve it. That's why we look at, um, when we look out at the stars to our naked eye, everything looks like a point. You cannot see the disk or the actual physical disk of a star with the human naked eye like we can. Uh, we can just make out the disk of, say, Jupiter or Mars with our eyes or Venus. Uh, but and, and definitely the moon, but we can never ever resolve uh, with our naked eye the actual disk that makes up a, a, a star because the distances are so vast because the R is so large in comparison to the D this theta falls way below this is such a small number falls way below the resolution of the human eye so let's go ahead and listen to Bob Nodal, and I will point out as he progresses through in his explanation, you can see what he's talking about. This is the scale, is if you look at this, is if we double R, then theta has to, um, is inversely proportional, so it has to have. That is, we have an inverse proportional proportion to the distance out from which we're viewing an object. If we double the distance, the angular resolution halves. If we 10 times the distance out, the angular size of the object shrinks to one tenth of what it was. So that's what he's talking. He's going to start at the Earth. The distance here is a half inch, which is one astronomical unit. Then we double, then we double again, we double, we double, we double, double, and so forth. And what he's trying to get at and lead you down this crazy path that once you get in doubling the distances from the sun, once you get beyond 26.6 astronomical units at the resolution of the eye, the sun becomes invisible. And that is a, a BS. That, that's a bunch of poppycock that never, never will happen. You'll easily see the sun beyond that point and um, I'll get and I'll be showing you that after we listen to Bob Noble. Let's now apply a little bit of common sense to this all right so if if the sun is truly 93 million miles away and by the time it gets to us in our sky we have a 0 0.52 degree angular size uh, that we are seeing it in our sky Okay, that is in eight light minutes, ladies and gentlemen. 93 million miles equates to eight light minutes. Now, um, there is a relationship between size of object and distance, and this is so simple, it, it, it defies the imagination. It is simply an inverse relationship between size and distance, i.e., and here I have a photo stack exchange, the same thing is over and over and over again. Essentially, what this is saying is that with a formula of, of, uh, in, that, that displays an inverse relationship, that means that if you double the distance to the size, uh, uh, to, yeah, to an object, then its angular size will be reduced to half. If you, if you have the distance to uh, an object, that means its angular size will be doubled and so on and so forth, okay? This is very simple, here it is, mainstream, mainstream, you know, every single answer says the exact same thing, that um, you double the distance, it's, it's an inverse relationship, great. So, um, and again, this is just a little bit more, you know, space.com, uh, talking about the size, the radius, and all that stuff, uh, where it is, here's the 864,938 mile diameter, uh, and, uh, the 93 million mile uh, average distance. Okay, so now let's apply a little bit of common sense to this. If at 93 million miles, eight mi light minutes away, the angular size of the sun is 0 0.52 degrees, then if you double that distance to 186,000 miles, which is 16 light minutes away, then the angular size uh, decreases to 0 0.26 degrees, okay? Uh, now, if you double that again from 186 to 372 million miles, 372 million miles, 
That is now 32 light minutes away, and you have reduced the angular size to 0 0.13 degrees. If you double that again uh, to 744 million miles, or one light hour away, then you have reduced the angular size to 0 0.065 degrees angular size. If you do that again, double that distance again to 1,488,000,000 miles, this equates to two light hours away, and now our angular size is at 0 0.0325 degrees, all right? Now, one thing I need to point out here that's super important to understand is the resolution, best case scenario, of the human eye is only, I wouldn't say only, but it is 0 0.02 degrees, which equals one arc minute or 0 0.0003 radians. So that is our angular resolution limit, 0 0.02 degrees. Now, if we go back and we double that 1,488,000,000 million miles, or two light hours away, and we double that again to 2,976,000,000 miles, and that takes it out to four light hours, then the angular resolution, the angular size, is 0 0.01625, which, guess what? That has now gone below the 0 0.02 degrees uh, limit of the eye, so at four light hours away, the sun would be invisible. Get okay? there, invisible. So let's just take it a couple more out just to kind of make a point here. So if we double that distance again to 5,952,000,000 miles, that is eight light hours away, and then the angular size reduces to 0 0.008125 degrees, right? And now let's double that one last time uh, to 11 billion 904 million miles, uh, which is only 16 light hours away, then our angular size is 0 0.0040625 degrees. In other words, we are five times smaller than the maximum angular size resolution of the eye can resolve. And guys, we're only talking about 16 light hours. That's only two-thirds of a light day, okay? And all of a sudden, the sun is five times smaller than our maximum resolution. The math doesn't lie, people. Um, you can do this yourself. I just jotted this down really quickly. That's super important to understand. Now, the math was correct. However, his conclusion is wrong. If you caught that, he said, at any distances beyond the resolution of the eye, what? The sun would be invisible. That's nuts. The guy does not understand anything about electromagnetic propagation and photons propagation and being able to actually resolve the physical size of an object. They are not tied together. You can take a flashlight and compute using this equation as to how far away you would not be able to see a flashlight or in my case I'm going to use a 1 8 inch LED and show you you could take a flashlight and put it five times further than what you would be able to resolve with your eye the angular resolution of your eye to see that physical size of that flashlight if you went five times and turn that flashlight on at night time you're easily going to see that flashlight it does not go invisible once you reach the resolution of the eye that's just totally nuts this guy is incompetent to say something like that now let's listen again hear what he says that's super important to understand is the resolution, best case scenario, of the human eye is only, I wouldn't say only, but it is 0 0.02 degrees, which equals one arc minute or 0 0.0003 radians. So that is our angular resolution limit, 0 0.02 degrees. Now, if we go back and we double that 1,488,000,000 miles, or two light hours away, and we double that again to 2,976,000,000 miles, and that takes it out to four light hours, then the angular resolution, the angular size, is 0 
point zero one six two five which guess what that has now gone below the zero point zero two degrees uh, limit of the eye so at four light hours away the sun would be invisible okay <laughs> I can't believe he said that anyway um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little demo and let's just do a quick computation here I have an LED that's one eighth inch in diameter and I'm mounted, mounting it on the far side of my shop area which is um, 0 0.125 inches and I'm going to be looking at it 40 feet away so we've got 40 times 12 inches or 480 inches so this is our D this is our R so what is the theta the theta then would be 0 0.125 divided by 480 well let's see what that comes out to 0.125 divided by 480 this comes out to um, 2.604 times 10 to the minus 4th. Now remember, this is radians. Okay? When we do D over R, we get radians. Now we want to take this in terms of theta. We want this in degrees. So we multiply, remember, 0.064 times 10 to the minus 4th times 57.3. That's how many degrees are in a radian, so 57.3, we get 0 0.0149 degrees. So the angular resolution of the eye is 0 0.02, so this has fallen below the angular resolution of the eye, and you will see that you will still see the LED and it will be very bright, even though when I'm viewing it 40 feet away, this 1 8 inch diameter LED, we're going to very easily see it, even the light of it, even though we cannot see or resolve the actual size of the LED. The LED will have disappeared beyond our ability to see it in the background, but yet the light from it will reach our eye and we'll see it very distinctly. Here you can see an LED light that I have mounted. It's one eighth of an inch in diameter. And I'm standing about three feet away. I'm fully zoomed in with my Sony RX10 camera, which is a 8.3 zoom. And I'll now zoom out all the way out to show Oh, I actually am seeing the LED light with my naked eye. So that's how I'm viewing it right now. This is at the, um, basically, the same resolution or magnification, if you will, of the, uh, the eye. And now I'm going to take the camera and go across the work area 40 feet away and we'll see that we cannot discern the magnitude physically we'd not be able to see the LED light physically it's beyond the resolution of the human eye when it's 40 feet away but yet we'll very easily be able to see the light the photons being emitted from the LED even though it is physically beyond the resolution of the human eye I'm now 40 feet across the work area looking at the LED light 40 feet away and you can see it there in the center of the image I'm going to zoom back out to where it is at the uh, resolution of the eye and you can see that it's now gone beyond view we can no longer make out the physical size of the LED and now I will turn it on. See, you can see the photons, the light coming from the LED. Even though 
physically it's beyond the resolution of the eye. Now zoom out again to where it goes beyond the resolution of the eye. Now I'll turn it on. See? You can easily see the light even though it's physically beyond the resolution of the human eye. So Bob Nodal as usual is wrong and lying to you regarding the situation of being able to view stars that are much beyond the distance of the resolution of the human eye. He has lied to you. It saddens me that I have to address this topic one more time. Mr. Bob Nodal of Goldbusters and F.E. Core has been continually misrepresenting himself and committing fraud. He is a liar and he is a fraudster and a con man. And his misrepresenting of who he is needs to stop. Mr. Bob Nodal you are in violation of Colorado law. I pointed this out to you before. Colorado law, Article 20, not 25, regarding surveyors, engineers, and architects, Part 1 of Engineers, this is 12-25-105. Unlawful practice, penalties, and enforcement. First part of the provision, it is unlawful for any individual to hold himself or herself out to the public as a professional engineer unless such individual has complied with the provisions contained in this part one. You have claimed to be a professional engineer, Bob. You have denied it when I have asked you but I will show you here shortly to prove that you have in your bios for the Flat Earth Conference of 2017 and now the one coming up in 2018 you are claiming to be a professional engineer of 35 years experience. I have never been able to find any licenses in the name of Bob Noel. In fact there's no record of you even having earned an engineering degree. You might have attended a university course here and there. That's highly unlikely, but you may have. But you've never earned a degree, which would allow you to call yourself an engineer, let alone a professional engineer. I have seen some of your handiwork. RF engineer, hardly. You are incompetent. As several of your episodes on Gold Busters has shown. There was one where you discussed the pa uh, paid pause radar system and addressed earth moon bounce using the Pasternak um, communication link calculator and you can't even use that properly. Twice in two different episodes of Globebusters, you have used that calculator improperly and you came off with an error of six orders of magnitude. That's a factor of a million. In power, that's 60 decibels. In error in your power, that's why you could conclude that you can't possibly do Earth Moon bounce with. RF signals, whereas hams do it all the time. You just bungled it. You bungled the calculator. Twice you came up with errors of six orders of magnitude, Bob. 
and you call yourself an RF engineer, you can't even apply a simple calculator properly. It's shameful you call yourself an engineer. You're an embarrassment to the engineering profession and you need to stop. <clears throat> There's also model law. 150.30 Grounds for Disciplinary Action Unlicensed Individuals. I'll read it for you. In addition to any other provisions of law, the board shall have the power to fine and recover costs from any unlicensed individual who is found guilty of engaging in the practice or offer to practice of engineering or surveying in this jurisdiction without being licensed in accordance with the provisions of this act. Number two, pay attention to number two here, Bob. Using or employing the words engineer engineering, surveyor, surveying, or any modification or derivative thereof in his or her name or form of business activity except as licensed in this act. Number five here refers to you also. Impersonating any professional engineer or professional surveyor. So I'll tell you what, Bob, you can do the right thing and take down all references in any episodes of Goldbusters or posting of your bio uh, at the FE conferences that state you are in. What does it say here? Bob Nodal is a professional engineer of 35 years with background in RF terrestrial microwave, satellite, ground station, computer system, so on. This is a lie. Bob Nodal is not a professional engineer. He's not even a degreed engineer. At best, he may have been a wire puller for a satellite dish installation company. He certainly isn't an RF engineer, as he's aptly demonstrated in Goldbusters where he can't even uh, use a Pasternak calculator properly. He bungled it and ended up with results that were six orders of magnitude off. A factor of a million. It's embarrassing. And here again, it says Bob Nodal is a professional engineer of 35 years. Bob, you are lying. You've lied to me, you're lying to the members and the public. It's time to stop this. Do the right thing and delete these references that you have claiming that you're a professional engineer and an engineer and we can let this thing go. Get it down by October 1st. Do the right thing. Quit committing fraud. Quit being a person who is breaking the law and embarrassing the engineering profession. Do the right. So, just do the right thing. Quit calling yourself an engineer because you don't have the credentials. If you can prove to me you have the credentials, then I'll back off from this. Show me you have a degree. Produce your degree. Tell me where, what institution you earned your degree from. What year so I can check it out. Show me your professional engineering license. There is none. I know it. You know it. So stop these fraudulent activities. Now, I'm going to play some audio from last Sunday from an FE Core Hangout. And this is you, Bob. The use of the word engineer is regulated, isn't it? Uh, what licensed engineers does FE Core have on staff to be able to use that name worth addressing? Okay, great. Um, yeah, we can address that. Um, no, the word engineer is not regulated. Um, an engineer, um, you know, if you're, you're speaking in terms of uh, engineers have to have specific degrees or anything like that, 
Um, that's probably what most people accept. And yes, uh, uh, we have many degreed engineers on staff, but um, there are many forms of engineering. And so the use of the word engineer is not uh, something that is re regulated. Uh, or if you're in the case of uh, George, um, he thinks that uh, everybody has to be a member of the Professional Engineer Society to be able to be considered an engineer. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, and in fact, you don't even have to have a degree to be an engineer. Um, engineers, you know, you could run a train and be called engineers. So uh, the, the short answer to your question is absolutely not. But believe me when I tell you that uh, everybody on this board uh, and most of the people in FE Core are credentialed engineers and have every right to use that term. Okay? Let's take a moment now to examine what Bob Nodal has just said. Nowhere have I ever stated that in order for an individual to be calling himself an engineer, he has to be licensed as a professional engineer. I've never said that. In fact, quite recently in a Nathan Oakley hangout, I have pointed out to people that most engineers within the United States are not licensed as professional engineers, particularly if they work for corporations where they're protected under the umbrella, the legal umbrella of that corporation. However, if an engineer decides to strike out on his own, such as I have, and offer his services, consulting services for a fee to the public, you need to be licensed in order to afford yourself legal protection. And you also need to be licensed as a professional engineer if you're going to submit expert testimony in a court of law. So Bob Noel is wrong there, among other things. Uh, now, <clears throat> a person generally um, has a title of engineer when they have earned a college degree in some field of engineering. Uh, now, the term is used loosely in many professions, like a person can go and get a uh, what's called a certified network engineer uh, certificate from Microsoft, uh, which is like a uh, six-month program or whatever. But that's a loosely held title that is used in that particular field. However, if you're going to be submitting and advertising yourself as having expertise as an electrical engineer, an RF, um, microwave engineer, you need to have a four-year degree in order to be making these claims, which Bob Nodal does not have. Um, Bob Nodal has also claimed in many places in print that he's a professional engineer in his bio for the Flat Earth Conferences. He has done that. And he also has done it on his LinkedIn page. I don't have that information posted in this video. However, another individual by the name of Flat Earth Reset has that information. I've posted a link at uh, the pinned comment section to this video for you to visit and see that. He describes that in detail. Uh, Flat Earth Reset um, has done a very thorough job in that regard. And I highly recommend you uh, check out his channel and see what he has uncovered uh, regarding Bob Noel and F.E. Corr. Um, but uh, Bob has overstepped the bounds, over, uh, overreached in calling himself a professional engineer and there is no license in the state of Colorado ever issued to a person by the name of Robert L. Noel. So Bob, you need to do the right thing and to cease calling yourself a professional engineer, and particularly an engineer. Bob Nodal is a member of a group called FE Core, which could be um, thought of as the uh, Flat Earth Club of Retards Extraordinaire, or for short, we can just call them the Flat Earth Clowns. Uh, let's listen to Bob now on what he has to say about this group. Now let's listen to what Bob Nodal has to say 
about the group he's associated with called EFICOR or Flat Earth Clowns for short. Uh, but believe me when I tell you that uh, everybody on this board uh, and most of the people in EFICOR are credentialed engineers and have every right to use that term, okay? No, that's not okay, Bob. That's a bold-faced lie, and you know it. You do not have an engineering degree. You are not a credentialed engineer. Neither is your fe are your fellow board members like Jaron Campanella. He's lucky if he can even add 2 plus 2. You have Karen B., who goes out hunting for Bigfoot with a bushel full of apples and a gun. Uh, you've got uh, Rick Kavanaugh, who is the... Uh, president of uh, FE Core, the closest he's come to engineering is maybe setting up lights for a rock group. Uh, you have Rick Hummer and uh, uh, other members and not, none of them are degreed engineers that I've been able to find. So you aren't telling the truth Bob. I don't think you've ever told the truth uh, over the last couple of years where well, you've been associated with this flat earth movement. At first, I thought maybe you just were totally a liar, that you're uh, just doing this uh, for yucks or something. But now, I'm beginning to understand that after your analysis last week on Globusters regarding the invisibility of the sun, after you have backed off a large enough distance so that uh, the uh, angular resolution of the disk or the angular size of the disk of the sun has fallen below the angular resolution of the human eye and thinking that all of a sudden now the sun's invisible that demonstrates to me that you're just plain stupid you are a stupid man Bob now and you're incompetent you've demonstrated that many times on your Globuster show you get some of the concepts right but you never ever bring it home. Your conclusions are always wrong. You don't understand physics. In fact, there's very little I think that you I really understand. It's disgraceful that you call yourself an engineer. It's shameful. So, it's about time, Bob, to get a life. Move on and stop conning people out of their money thinking that you're researching flat earth or globe earth or anything like that that you can competently uh, set up experiments and make measurements. You can't. I know you can't. You know you can't. So move on and get a life Bob.